so today I've got my buddy Brandon here and I had a kind of an idea when I was watching the Olympics recently. When you watch like the Olympics and you watch wrestling and judo and this kind of thing, a lot of times you'll see a lot of moves that are in jiu-jitsu, that we do in jiu-jitsu, that you'll see in wrestling. I wrestled first and so when I came over to jiu-jitsu there was tons of stuff that I started using from wrestling that came in handy in jiu-jitsu and, and vice versa. And obviously this makes sense since jiu-jitsu is kind of a a combining of judo and catch wrestling and all this stuff mixed together. But what I wanted to do is show you guys a, a few movements from wrestling and show you how they're using wrestling and then a few movements in jiu-jitsu using the same movements basically and how they're using jiu-jitsu just so you can kind of, you know, see the difference between the two sports and see how possibly you could use the same moves for other stuff. And again, take this uh, as a, an idea for yourself. One of the coolest things I think for me is watching other grappling arts and then trying to figure out, well, how can I use this in my sport? Because you'll have to modify it, you'll have to make it a little bit different, but it can be an interesting sort of experiment to do. So with that said, I got Brandon here, um, a wrestling, college wrestling champion. He's going to show some wrestling stuff and I'll show you the jiu-jitsu stuff. Okay, so we're going to look at the uh, the leg ride. Obviously, you're going to, as soon as you see this, if you've never wrestled before, you're going to be like, I know exactly what that is in jiu-jitsu, but um, you can see what it's used for wrestling. So for sure. So the guy's going to start down at his base. Uh, when it comes to leg riding, there's tons of ways to put it in, but we're just going to already go in. So the way I learned it, you always want to have like a hook in here, like actually inside, and then you want to have a hook behind the back foot here. Uh, of course, you can go doubles. That's totally fine. But uh, most high-level guys are going to go here because it just makes it easier to hold on. So the go-to move for most people with the leg ride, including myself, is just going to be a power half, and I'm going to go slow. My goal here is, yeah, my chest is down on his, on his back. I need to get my chest up, and that raises his shoulder up. When I'm doing that, I start to move his elbow up by, put, by just pointing mine up. When I get here, and now I can just start to look over my shoulder, boom, I can get here and I can stretch them out. I got my back points here, come here, secure back points, I can secure a pin here, a ton of different things. And so obviously guys in wrestling, the whole purpose of that is to get back exposure and to get their back on the mat, right? And that's how they get their points. In Jiu Jitsu obviously, so if you're a wrestler watching this, right, maybe you're a newer wrestler, Obviously, this is typically what we do with our leg rider, or our back mount, right? We have two hooks. Um, the hooks can change too. There's a lot of variations. So like a lot of times, like I sometimes, if I play on this overside, I like playing a half back position opposed to the traditional back mount. Um, if I'm playing the underside here, I'll play this leg up and you can play over, like over under. Some guys will start to hang out here and get control of the double unders. And so there's a lot of different variations. But for us, what we're doing is we're keeping a chest to connect, uh, chest to back connection, and trying to be slightly higher so that our arms are right at choking level. Right? If he gets down like super low, it's very hard for me to choke. Or if for some reason if he gets really high, right here, like say if he's sitting back, like I can't really choke. Right? So I'm always trying to maintain this position so this hand can go underneath. And again, my goal is not to get to the the pin. My goal is to get to the back. Uh, but again, you can see where. If you, some wrestlers come into jiu-jitsu, they know how to use a leg ride and get to back mount really quickly, really easily. So that's one of them. Yeah, I, can I say something yeah. about that too? So like starting this position, leg ride, same thing. You call this the half back position or yeah, whatever? Yeah, call it half back, yeah. We'll just call it like a crab ride, same crab thing. Ride. If this guy gets really low, like if you just sink your hips or whatever, this is not good for me. It's like really, really bad for me. If this guy gets high, like he gets somehow gets his hips on top of mine, this is horrible, I'm pinned. So it's kind of just a thing is like, my coach always told me, or wrestling, mm -hmm. I want to get here or here mm. and get in. If I'm getting to this leg ride and they, they get me to a crab, kind of similar, I think, is just I want to get close off the distance yeah, yeah. now. And then whenever I want to start doing my turns, I can start moving and stuff. But I just thought that was like a cool similarity. Yeah, it's the same idea. Basically, we're we're basically doing the same thing. We're keeping the chest connection, chest to back connection, and then control, basically controlling all the same grips. Just the ending is different. Where you're trying to pin, and then I'm trying to get to the choke. Okay. So this one is the switch. So sometimes I, I've done the switch like straight up as is in, in jiu-jitsu as well in wrestling. Um, but the, some of the mechanics of it I, I use in jiu-jitsu a little bit differently, and I use them from some other positions. So I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. But he'll take, a, take it away and show the switch. So uh, what I want to do is obviously, if you know I wrestle, this is like bottom position. Chewie's got top position. He's gonna start with his hand on my elbow and one hand on the stomach. My goal in the switch, to switch with wrestling is taking this hand that's connected, where we're connected here, coming across, and then I'm gonna sit out and I'm trying to capture his arm at the same time, coming through, getting his leg, and just scooting through and coming under. Uh, there's like a lot of stuff can happen here. I can 
So we'll go back, boom, I get here, boom. So when I'm here, so sometimes I might end up with my leg inside, and that's totally fine. Sometimes my leg's gonna be, his leg's gonna be on this side right here. That's also fine. If his leg gets here, my coach always taught me, just for guys who do wrestling, stepping over, starting to cradle guys in here, just threading my cradle, because the guy's usually just gonna bail out, and I can just get behind him and start wrestling up if I want to. I'm back to my leg after this. There's some ideas with the switch. Yeah, turn this way right here. And what I'm, what we're gonna look at for the jiu-jitsu side is this part. So we're loaded up right here, right? We're going. So you go and do your switch. Is this right here? So if any time we're in a situation where that person's arm's extended and we get our arm over top, like our tricep over top of their tricep, like this, we're in a really strong spot. And so check this out. Here's a couple places where that can come into play. Let's go to go to my guard. So one of my favorite spots is like let's say if you set up for like you're in guard and you start setting for like kimura sweeps and stuff right a lot of times you'll be back in this same position pretty similar to what we were just in right and then what we can do is we can grab underneath this can be good one if you like a lot of guys will squeeze tight because they're going to just try to like forward like push me back down so i can go underneath here and grab this hamstring and essentially in that switch like position now i'm going over top so if he tries to just pull his arm out it's kind of tough but i can pull boom i can start to set up the kimura Right, or again, then sometimes I can go right out to the back here. Very similar to what he was doing before. Another one that'll happen in some cases is if someone passes my guard and their arm is down like this, where a lot of times they'll come straight down there here. If I can get up to my side and get right here. Now, if he, if he tries to get his arm and go, like try to get, um, try to just walk your right arm, your left arm up around to my neck. See, he can't do it because I'm over top of his tricep. To get that arm back, he's gonna have to pull out, which is gonna give me space to get back to my guard. And if he doesn't let go, which sometimes this will happen, they stay tight right, right here and just trying to squeeze, I can easily pop up, shoot, and we go right back for Kimura's, things like that. So that tricep over tricep position, if you're on top and it's really strong, especially if we can get that anchor in the back of the hamstring. And so that's the way that it works with a switch. Another way you can do it in jiu-jitsu. For sure, that's good. All right, guys. So this is the reverse gut wrench. So the reverse gut wrench, um, I use it a lot in jiu-jitsu. It's not. It's really not that common in jiu-jitsu. I'll show you a really cool move that you can do with it. Um, but it typically, you use it a lot in Greco. Greco. Do you use it much in freestyle? No, because they're gonna go for your legs. Yeah. Usually. Right. Because in because in in, uh, in freestyle like or in Greco, you can't go for the legs. They can't grab the stuff. Right. But you see it a lot. Like if you watch like a lot of matches in Greco, you'll see dudes get this giant lift from it. Um, you know, you can look at like guys that. Do like the corralling drops yeah, and stuff like that. So um, you'll typically see it like this, and I'll let him take it over. So usually the way I learned how to set it up on the hop sides is I'm gonna no, a normal gut is gonna come. You're gonna come forward like this. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna stack them here. But this guy's really good, so he's not gonna let me gut this way. So instead, I'm just gonna I, I acted like I was gonna go gut here, and then I just turn over and get it, and I lock him in, and I get him in the pocket. All wrestlers watching this are gonna know that this is called the pocket in here. From here, I'm just going to start to sit back, get him over his shoulder, I can kick over, and then I can start to scoop and just keep going. And that's how we're going to rock our points. Obviously, uh, the Russians and stuff, they like to pick it up and go crazy, but I mean, we're not doing that here. Yeah. But just... You could though, yeah, because like yeah, I've could. seen where a lot of guys will, they'll get it up to the knee, yeah. and they'll stand and they'll... Whoo. Yeah, exactly. But if you're just drilling it, I would drill it this way. Obviously, if you're in a match, you know, you're trying to take someone out, so you're going to pick them up and get those big points yeah but in practice I'm just gonna start scooting and if you guys watch a lot of wrestling matches it's not like they they go flat in those positions right and that's yeah. because they don't want to give the backup so they're trying to make their base as wide as possible yeah so a place where I use the reverse gut wrench is in uh, was in a guard passing to take the back so uh, lay down real quick so from a, a double under position one of the things that I hap uh, had happened to me a lot when I was passing the guard is I would go through the situation where I would be passing the guard with like a stack pass or whatever. The person would turtle up like this. And then the, the way that we used to always drill it was we would let go and then go to the seat belt, right? Or go to chest to back connection. The problem was is that I would get here and the guy turtled. And then as I'm going around, he would regain his guard. Damn it. Like I just, I was that close, right? So it's super, it's frustrating to deal with. So the reverse gut wrench was a grip I haven't used in a long, long time. Because um, you don't get a lot of positions in wrestling, jiu-jitsu where we do it. And then now it's for the last several years, it's been one of my favorites. So when a guy, like if I'm stacking him up here, and I've got that stack pass going and he starts to go, 
I'm gonna hang on to this here and then shoot in. Notice I got that reverse gut wrench going. And what I'm doing here now is I'm going into a truck position. And so from here, now I can pinch the knees. I could attack, right? I can start to attack the legs and everything here and do some, some crazy stuff. Or what I typically do is, boom, start to immediately go for the back mount here, right? It's a workout. So I love that position because it gets rid of that, that separation where I have to let go and then go around to the back. Because if you think about the truck, my buddy Brandon McGaffron told me about this. So if we think about back mount, traditional back mount is like basically back mount to the upper body. The truck is like back mount, but to the lower back. And so even in, let's say if he went to a turtle position, like a lot of guys are really good about fighting in here for me to get those hooks in. I love going right through here and I'll either go between, I'll either go right between his legs or I'll get the regular reverse gut here, shoot my hips through and pull him back. And the key when you do this is to basically just pull your, pull the person's waistline to your stomach. And then from here, we can begin to get our truck position and then go for the back. But again, it's another idea where same move, essentially, just use differently from grappling to grappling sport. The next one is a Grammy roll. So the Grammy roll, as soon as you see it, you're gonna be like, ah, oh, yeah, I, I roll with a guy that does that thing, right? Um, but basically, it's, it's a really good counter in jiu-jitsu, or in wrestling, that they use uh, to counter a lot of takedowns and different things like that, really, really good. And it's really hard to deal with, especially if you get a guy who's really good at it. Um, but then also in jiu-jitsu, we use it a lot of times uh, for guard retention, as most of them. And you could, you could, obviously, you could use it either way. If you're going for a takedown, you could use it as a counter for the takedowns. And, and I've, seen, uh, I've seen some of the guys, I think I was like the Rotolo brothers. I was watching one of those, hit a sick Grammy roll, uh, fighting the takedown battle, if I'm correct. He did. Yeah, and then, so, so you see it in jiu-jitsu, you as takedown, but you can also use it on the ground. So we'll go through and take a look at it. So, essentially in a Grammy, obviously, this is again, bottom position, he's top. What my goal is, is getting my arm under, what they usually teach you is come foot up, step up, and roll. The way I like to do it is just a grounded Granby. So I'm just going to take my arm under, boom, 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 walk here. I want to get here, boom. And then we call it what we call a dogfight position. I always want to come out of my dogfight position. For wrestling, at least. So, dogfight position. The reason I want to come out this way is because you never want a guy to chase your back after you get out. Obviously, you're just wasting time, and now you know you didn't get an escape point. And so, uh, obviously, uh, there's a ton of ways to do Grammy rolls. The, the way that Rotolo brother did it is the guy kind of mat returned him, and he did like a Grammy from like a return. So kind of the guy came up and shoot. You can mat return me like we're wrestling. It's fine. What's that? Now? So you can like mat return me. So you lift and you gotta turn me either way. Boom. <laughs> and you can Grammy out like this. So those are basically two different ways to do the Grammy. You can hit it from them returning you, or you can hit it from the bottom. And those are two ways I hit it, at least. Yeah, and then so when you're back down, I mean, really not much changes from it. Uh, the difference is gonna be where you end up. So you could roll and be facing the person again, which is just fine. But a lot of times if you've rolled with like one of your Gumby Jiu Jitsu guy players, yeah. in our gym, guys like Patrick do it all the time. Like he's like 200 pounds and he can like roll into a ball and he'll do these things where basically if he's here, let's say if we're trying to, like, let's say if we're passing the guard or we just like got to turtle position, right? This is really common. Just got to turtle, we're here. The guy rolls through, boom back legs back in front of me again right happens all the time and so it's another good move one more time on that one so check it out we're here we just took the back one here we're, we're, I'm getting ready to try to get this back right here he rolls through and it's the same thing nothing fancy about it but if you get really good at that stuff it can be a great counter for takedowns and it can be a great counter for people trying to take your back when they're passing the guard again same it was the same problem I was talking about when I was talking about the reverse gut wrench Good guys at Grammy rolls are really hard to actually take their back because they do it so fast. They don't wait. They just immediately pull the trigger. Yeah. All right, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. Again, just threw some stuff at you. Uh, just some moves that I was thinking about from wrestling that we use in jiu-jitsu. And so you could kind of see how they were playing for you guys that either haven't done jiu-jitsu or haven't done wrestling before. And then for some of you that are wrestlers that are doing jiu-jitsu, maybe kind of give you some ideas to say, well, maybe I don't have to take all these wrestling moves and just chuck them out and throw them away to learn this jiu-jitsu stuff. Maybe I can take some of the stuff that I've been doing for a good chunk of my life and I can use it in this next grappling sport. So um, that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you guys next time.